everybody, and like I said, Mickey Mouse is dead, so I'm going to continue the series in my serious voice. Okay, the falsehood that Christians like to point out is that the Bible is a great source of morality. Here are the Bible verses supporting this falsehood. Pause the video and read them to yourselves. I will not read them out loud, um, but I wrong the verses to you. So, yeah. Here are the Bible the Bible is not an ultimate moral guide because it has rape, slavery, and name calling, and it makes you hate yourself just to continue to follow it. And if you don't obey, you'll be annihilated, assuming that the lake of fire is true. All right, we have a uh, one of the rape laws in the Bible, Deuteronomy 22, 28 through 29. I will not read it. Read it to yourself for the sake of time. Now I know how you Christians are. You like to say, "Oh, out of context." Now let me ask you this: In what context is it moral and ethical for a girl to be forced to marry her rapist? In what context? Uh, we have Deuteronomy 22, 23 through 24. I'm not read it. Read it to yourself. Now, in what context is it ethical to kill a rape victim that is not that she didn't scream loud enough? Um, this thing is literally assuming that. The girl who was raped actually was doing uh, an affair. It's assuming. I mean, you don't even give it the girl a chance to actually hear her side of the story. You just want to, oh, put her to death because she didn't scream loud enough. I mean, what, what, in what context is this moral and, and correct? Hello? Hello? We have another one. Deuteronomy 20, 10 through 14. I will not read it. Read it to yourself. Pause the video. Read it to yourself. Now, in that last verse, Yahweh explicitly says to go and enslave a town, and if they don't surrender to your terms, you get to go in, attack it, kill all the men, but keep all the women and children uh, for yourselves. Now, in what moral and ethical context is it moral and correct to go into another city? You know, kill all the men and keep all the women and children for yourselves. And what moral context is this? Alright, this verse is too long. Um, pause the video and read it to yourself. Now, in what context is it moral and ethical to capture a female from another nation and make her become your wife by force? In what context... Is it moral and ethical to capture another female, female from another nation and make her to be your wife by force? Alright, Judges 5.30. I will not read it out loud. You read it to yourself. Pause the video and read it to yourself. In what context is it moral and ethical to take a damsel for two men to have for themselves? What moral and ethical context is this? We have... Um, a verse such as Exodus 21, 7-11, I would not read it because it's too long for the sake of time. Pause the video, read it to yourself. Now, the thing I got out of that was, you know, God explicitly, God, Yahweh Jehovah explicitly says, Oh, it's okay to sell your daughter into slavery and she could be a sex slave and all that. And as long as, uh... Uh, you know, the person that uh, she is sold to doesn't uh, break the contract or whatever. It's still retarded. It's still immoral because slavery is not moral. It is not moral. So let me ask you this. In what context is it ethical and moral to sell your daughter as a slave, sex slave, or whatever? What context? In what moral and ethical context is it okay to sell your daughter as a slave or sex slave? Please answer. Okay, I'll read this, but I'm going to break this down. Now, let's break down Leviticus 25, 44 through 46 piece by piece. However, you may purchase male or female slaves among the foreigners who live around you. 
That's verse 44. And look at that picture. Doesn't that remind you of something? That is the Atlantic slave trade. Oh. Verse 45. You may also purchase the children from such residents, foreigners, including those who have been born into your land. You may treat them as your property, passing them onto your children as permanent inheritance. Look at that picture. That is from slavery from the 16 to 1800s. I mean, you, you can't if if you can't see that this is explicitly supporting slavery you know you are truly delusional verse 46 you mu you may treat your slaves like this but the people of Israel your relatives you must never treat this way now after reading all that in what context is in what moral and ethical context is owning another human being as property for life ever moral and correct now if you're going to defend this I'm automatically assume that you came from the Confederate Army because I am not taking anything out of context it's in your Bible look it up now we move on on how to beat your slaves Exodus 21, 20 through 21. When a man strikes his male or female slaves with a rod so hard that the slave dies under his hand, he must be punished. If, however, the slave survives for a day or two, he must not be punished since the slave is his own property. In what context is it moral and ethical to beat another human being to death as long as they outlive the beating within two days? In what context, and I'm not going to repeat the question, but yeah, in what context is it moral and ethical? By the way, I know how some of y'all apologetics and defenders like to do. Y'all like to say, oh, slavery wasn't as bad, really. Well, guess what? The six years and the seventh year people go free, this only applies to Hebrew slaves. And I'm going to show you the verse in a few minutes. Sorry guys, this verse is just too long. But read the thing to yourself. And you know the drill. Now, in what context is it moral and ethical to own another human being for six years? And then you know if um if that hebrew slaves loves um the wife that you the master gave him he loves the wife and the children and all that and then you drill something you drill an all into the ear of that hebrew slave and then they can become your slave for life in what context is it moral and ethical to do this you see this is this is where we have major conflict right here. Oh wait, but that's the Old Testament. Um, this is the biggest excuse that Christians like to say. Well, here's some New Testament verses. I'm not going to read them out loud for the sake of time. But yeah, pause the video and read them to yourselves. Another New Testament verse. Pause the video. Read it to yourself. And this is another huge verse that supports slavery in the New Testament. Titus 2, 9 through 10. I will not read it out loud. You read it to yourself. Now, you want to say I'm taking this thing out of context. In what context is it moral and ethical to own another human being as property for life and force them to obey you without question? I remember in the beginning of this video, I was talking about the Bible has name calling verses. Well, we got Proverbs 18 2. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding but only is expressing his opinion. So, obviously, it's calling me a fool because I am saying that this book is immoral and it's calling me a fool. See, that's that's perfectly named, that's name calling. Um, Proverbs 29, 11. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man holds it back quietly. I mean, it wants you to shut up. 
It doesn't want you to express your opinion. Obviously, this is mind control, people. Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah. The fear of Yahweh, Jehovah is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fail. No. We should not fear Yahweh, Jehovah, because Yahweh, Jehovah is extremely unethical. We have some more name-calling verses. Proverbs 28, 26. Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool, but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. He who trusts in his own mind. You see? Name-calling. Name-calling. And this is also mind control. They don't want you to trust in your own ethics and morals. They want you to follow this garbage. Fail. And then we got the the atheist uh, verse, Psalms 14, 1. Um, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do uh, abominable deeds. There is none who does good. Fail. That verse is a complete fail, and it's a fallacy. Ah. Because atheists... And theists who are against this religion have morals. And they are way they are morally superior to this dogma book and whatever is in this book. And do you remember that self hating um thing I said? Alright. Luke fourteen, twenty six through twenty seven. If any man comes to me and hates not his father, mother, wife, children, and Brethren and sisters, yeah, even his own life also cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear the cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So you have to hate yourself, hate everything, hate your family, your children, everything, in order to follow this religion. Bull. Bull. It is complete bull and nonsense. This is nonsense. This is caveman nonsense. Because this is the most unethical, immoral, it's just absurd, and it's, it is literally ridiculous if this is the truth. This is so ridiculous. <laughs> I am laughing because of the absurdity that's in this book. And you guys actually defend this garbage and say it's the it's the moral guide of the world. <laughs> shame, shame, shame to anyone who defends this garbage and then say, oh, uh, Yahweh Jehovah is love and ethical and all that. Shame on you. I know this is a long video, guys, but man, this is this is just. Uh, I just had to show the ridiculousness of the Bible. It's just totally ridiculous. It cannot be the source of morality and ethics. Disagreeing with the Bible does not make anyone a fool, especially when the Bible is extremely immoral. You are more moral than this book. You are more moral than Yahweh Jehovah, you are more moral than anything that has anything to do with Christianity. That that has anything to do with this book. You are more moral, I am more moral, all of you guys are more moral. This is ridiculous. Alright, hey Matt Dilly Honey, that's right, I took your line. And I'm give you credit because yes, when I gave up Christianity I, yes, I had an atheist moment, too. Yeah, so, yeah. Matt Dilly, honey, that was for you. And, yeah, all right, guys, tune in next time. I'm going to expose some more garbage. Oh, man. I'm going to expose some more, more stuff on, on Christianity. Oh, it's just ridiculous.